India has endured a sweltering summer this year, with daytime temperatures reaching above 46 degrees Celsius in many areas. The heat breached all records in March, making the month the hottest ever since 1901. The soaring temperatures affected crops, especially wheat, that's sensitive to heat during the final stages when kernels mature and ripen. The world's second largest wheat producer is now looking at an uncertain future. It cancelled all wheat exports suddenly, following a drop in wheat procurement. Prices of food items have risen steadily, causing immense hardships to ordinary people and farmers. एक खतरे की घंटी है ये भी हमारे लिए जिस तरीके से तापमान बढ़ रहा है ये जमीन जो है वो बर्बाद हो जाएगी क्योंकि फसल कोई होगी नहीं Do climate change and extreme weather patterns now threaten the food security of over 1.3 billion people in the Badra Mansa village in Punjab, India. Hardeep Kaur and her husband, Makan Singh, own a small plot of land where they grew wheat and mustard. Typically, the yield was barely enough to make ends meet. My husband had a relationship with my family, and he had a lot of money. कर खर्च वास्ते थे खेत देविच कैंटी बोर लाना सी तीन चार साल हो गए पहला साड़ी पप्पे था एक्सीडेंट हो गया सी उन ने दिल आज वास्ते लेते सी उस तो बाद देविच ऐसी मज्जा लेनिया सी दुधवा के गुजारा करना सी मैं साल लेनिया सी ओढ़ो फड़ ले ती फसल कट दी ये गई कर्जा साड़ा व्याज वर्दा गया मकान प्लांट he expected a good harvest that would have helped with his debts. मेरे पति ने हमें इसी भी कारण को बढ़िया हो उते पहला जीरी भी बढ़िया होई था मैं जिन्ने भी रुपये लगते ने उन्हनों उतार दूं. But when a blistering heat wave swept through North India earlier this year, Makan's recovery plans were scorched. अन्नी ज़्यादा गर्मी पड़ी. कि कनक का दाना ही नहीं बने हम फरवरी के एंड ची गर्मी बैन लग गई मारे चं स्टार्ट सी मारे चं उधर ही कनक वन दाना बंद है वो बने ही नहीं इस कर के नुकसान हो गया सारे नॉल वड्डी नुकसान था दिस ईयर इंडिया फेस्ड एन अनप्रेसिडेंटेड हीट वेव टेम्परेचर्स वेंट अबाव 46 डिग्रीज अ लेवल नॉट सीन सिंस रिकॉर्ड कीपिंग ब the average maximum temperature was the highest recorded in more than 120 years. Weather stations in the north regularly reported temperatures exceeding 45 degrees, the threshold for what is considered a heat wave. The sweltering weather was also more widespread and prolonged than previous episodes, with some regions reporting 56 days of heat waves. In 2022, March, we experienced heat wave, severe heat wave conditions in parts of central India as well as northwest India. It extended towards northwest, uh, affecting regions like Punjab, Haryana, and um, parts of Madhya Pradesh and parts of West UP. It was basically because of the fact that um, in the month of March, there was almost a semi-permanent uh, high pressure cell at a height of about 3 to 6 kilometers above the mean sea level. And when there will be a high pressure cell at a height of say 3 to 6 kilometers, it will lead to subsidence or downward motion of the air. And this downward motion of the air leads to compression and hence the warming of air. And therefore, the surface air temperature increases. Usually, 
Temperatures in India reached their peak in May and June. But this year, the summer came early. This time was different in the sense that we got early heat wave with temperature shooting up by six to eight degrees above the normal and leading to very severe heat wave in some parts of the country. And the big issue was because it was early and the wheat crop, especially which is a major crop, was still in the, you know, maturation stage. Wheat is particularly sensitive to heat stress. It's estimated that a one degree rise in temperature could reduce yields by 6%. पर हेक्टेयर जो प्रोडक्टिविटी है वो डिक्रीज किया है ड्यू टू हीट वेव कारण ये है कि जब भी वो फ्लावरिंग के बाद जब सीड बनता है उस समय जो टेम्परेचर चाहिए एक प्लेजेंट टेम्परेचर चाहिए वो प्लेजेंट टेम्परेचर के समय टेम्परेचर हाई टेम्परेचर था जिसकी वजह से उसके गेहूं के जो दाने हैं वो स्रिंक कर गए तो उसका वेट देखेंगे तो वेट लॉस हो गया तो जहां प्रोडक्शन हमने पर हेक्टेयर 120 क्विंटल हम प्रोडक्शन करते थे वो घट करके 95-200 क्विंटल रह गया The scorching sun also caused underground water tables to plummet, threatening to turn large tracts of farmland into a dust bowl. For Makan Singh, the situation turned dire when a crucial piece of equipment broke. The water was very hot in the summer, so the water was cut off. The water was cut off, so the water was cut off. The water was cut off, so the water was cut off. The water was cut off, so the water was cut off. On April 19 this year, Makan Singh woke up early. He brought a dry fodder for the animals. Then, he had a bath and his breakfast. Makan finally walked to the room beside the field and hanged himself. Our father was in the work of our father. देख दिया खेत कोई काम कर दे होने की उन्होंने जाके देखिया तो फिर पेंड दे बिच बिसर पेंसिल में जाओ रनु फोन करके सब दिया सानू तो सब तो लास्ट दे दसे हैं अदा सच बांधे सी अदा दास्ती सी बस पैसे थोड़े बहुत जिन्ने सानू पता सी उन्ना दी टेंशन कर दे सी जेड बाद दे बिच पता लग गया the story of Makan and Hardeep is far from an outlier in a state hit by falling farm yields and farmer suicides. Suicides among farmers are not uncommon in India. In 2019, it was estimated that over 10,000 farmers and farm laborers killed themselves across the country. Particularly in Punjab, the situation is alarming. In 2020, at least one farmer suicide occurred every day in the state, according to activists collecting data. Now, climate change and heat wave have added one more factor to the deepening crisis. According to a farmers' union, this year at least 12 suicides took place in April alone. Mommy, Daddy, go to the house. No, 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 ठीक है क्योंकि बोर नहीं हैगा पानी नहीं हैगा और थे पानी तो भी ना ते बंद अब कर देवी चुक मौन वाला कारण वाला भी नहीं हैगा ते बच्चा मेरा छोटा है ते पापा साड़ी जमे ही बुजुर्ग ने तो सी देख दियो सुन दा ना नून दिस दा ना नून ता मंजेती बैठे ने वो तो साड़ी ली बंदी है काम बस सोंडा सी 
the entire nation was caught off guard by the severe heat wave. India's is the world's second largest wheat producer. It maintains a tricky balance between demand and supply. Of the 107 million tons of wheat produced in 2021, around 100 million tons went towards meeting domestic consumption, including 25 million tons for a food welfare program that feeds over 800 million poor. Around 7 million tons were exported to other countries. But the situation changed in May. The government set up alarm bells by banning wheat exports as annual procurement fell below its target. The government decision is absolutely right decision because we have a large population, more than a billion, and we have to feed that population. And already this time, because of terminal heat stress, we are expecting a shortfall in the production. We are self-sufficient, and in fact, we can feed other countries also, but then first priority is our own population. And because agriculture is exposed to the atmospheric condition, to the weather and climate conditions, which are highly variable, so we should always have a good amount of uh, grains stored for to meet such kind of eventualities. But there are trade-offs to an export ban, including the loss of income for exporters. The wheat prices are in India is about 20, 21, 22, 23 rupees a kg. International prices fluctuating between 40 to 50 rupees a kg. That government of India should use its own agencies to supply to the world market on G2G basis at world market price so that the surplus money which government of India will generate we can give back to Indian farmers in the form of fertilizer subsidy, fuel subsidy or any other welfare scheme. But it's not just wheat farmers in Punjab who are facing a grim battle with the weather. In the neighboring states of Haryana and Uttar Pradesh, many have found large chunks of their incomes wiped out and the problem has spread to crops other than wheat. Narella Wholesale Market on the outskirts of Delhi, one of Asia's largest food grain markets. Every year, it deals in almost 400 million kilograms of grain. Hundreds of farmers sell their produce here every morning. These trucks will send the commodity to all corners of the country and overseas. Even on a blistering summer morning, work at the market never stops. Laborers can only have a few minutes for a lunch break. But this year, their load is a little lighter than usual. The quality and quantity of wheat have taken a hit due to the extreme heat. One farmer who faced the full onslaught of the merciless sun is 43-year-old Vinesh Rana in the Daha village in Uttar Pradesh. अब की बार गर्मी बहुत जल्दी आ गई मौसम में परिवर्तन हुआ उसका सबसे ज्यादा प्रभाव हमारे यहां गेहूं की फसल पर पड़ा है गर्मी पड़ी तो उसमें मतलब आप यह समझ सकते हैं कि प्राकृतिक रूप से गेहूं की फसल ना पक के गेहूं की फसल सुखा दी गई दाना भी सिकड़ा है उसकी क्वालिटी भी डाउन हुई है उसका वजन भी डाउन हुआ है पैदावार तो डाउन हुई हुई है हमारे यहां के वेस्टर्न यूपी की बात करें तो हम प्रति एकड़ जो है गेहूं उत्पादन 30 क्विंटल तक पहुंचता था वो 20 तक रह गया तो प्रति ये मिनिमम कम से कम प्रति एकड़ 5 क्विंटल गेहूं कम पैदा हुआ है In May, the government relaxed the quality norms for wheat procurement. It raised the maximum permissible limit of shriveled and broken grains to 18% from 6%. But Vinish could not take advantage of the move. 
मैं जो बोता हूँ वह तीन से चार एकड़ गेहूँ में बोता हूँ उसे हर साल में जो है गेहूँ है सरकारी खरीद केंद्र पर मैं गेहूँ ले जाता हूँ अब की बार मेरे पास तीन एकड़ गेहूँ था मैं आ, अब की बार मैं एक किलो गेहूँ बाज़ार में बेच नहीं पाया मेरे पास इतना कम उत्पादन हुआ Vinesh, however, has other crops that he can rely on. He's now growing sugarcane that promises a return of 150,000 rupees or around 1,800 US dollars. He also owns cattle that provide him with a steady supply of milk. But Vinesh's small village has been shell-shocked by the record-breaking temperatures. The paddy planting season hasn't yet begun, and the scorching heat keeps everyone indoors. When Vinesh cycles to his farmland in the late afternoon, he cannot even find one farmer in the narrow village lanes. पानी देना है समस्याएं कहीं होती हैं गेहूं की फसल में उस समय जिस समय गेहूं की फसल पक रही होती है उस समय हवा ज़्यादा तेज चलती है तो पानी लगाने में यदि पानी लगाया तो गेहूं गिर गया तो तब पैदावार कम बहुत सावधानी की जरूरत होती है पानी लगाने में भी तो एक पानी की सावधानी कम से कम उस समय खेत में पर्याप्त नमी बनाए रखना वो किसान के लिए बहुत कठिन कार्य है लेकिन हवा चल रही है उधर हीट वेव चल रही है उधर पानी देगा तो फसल गिर जाएगी वैसे भी उत्पादन कम होगा तो किसानों के लिए तो दोनों तरफ मरना था वो पानी लगाए तब भी और पानी न लगाए तब भी A grim battle is also being waged by farmers in the neighboring state of Haryana, a part of India's grain bowl, along with Punjab. These states are the biggest contributors to the country's national reserves of wheat and rice. 45-year-old Sukram Pal in Shah Jahan Pal Goranda village grows several crops apart from wheat. His annual produce includes pulses, mustard, and even rice. Sarso ki jo baat kare hum, hamare yahan 11 se 12 quintal per acre jo paidavar hoti thi. Ab ke baar wo paidavar 5 se 6 quintal pe aa gayi hai. To aap maan ke chalein, to 6 se 7 quintal ka nuksan hua hai kisan ko sarso mein. Mere paas चना भी था चना भी था उसमें भी लॉस हुआ था थोड़ा था मेरे पास तो आधा एकड़ था इसलिए मान के चलो अब की बार मेरे पास तीन क्वाल्टर चना निकला उसमें अब जो मेरे पास खेत में मूंग मूंग दाल है पहले छः से आठ क्वाल्टर प्रति एकड़ निकलती थी अब की बार जो हमारे गांव में आसपास एरिए में जो निकल रही है वो दो से तीन क्विंटल निकल रही है पर एकड़ पर एकड़ तो ये नुकसान ही है चार से जो ये चार से छः क्विंटल करीब नुकसान है किसान को मूंग दाल में नुकसान तो काफ़ी हुआ है अब की बार इस वर्ष जो पिछला वर्ष गया है वो लगभग सभी फसलों में नुकसान है चाहे वो आप तापमान की वजह से लगा लो चाहे वो कीड़ों के प्रकोप से लगा लो Climate change means it's a change in ambient temperature. So whether it is a livestock, whether it is wheat, whether it's a vegetable, whether it is oil seed pulses, every biological system, irrespective of the source and origin, has a ecosystem in which they perform the best. If the ecosystem changes, their performance will be impacted, their yield will be impacted, their quality will be impacted. At the same time, when the ecosystem changes even the insect and disease behavior which you know generally happens on these living things like plants and animals and other things they will also change their behavior and when they change their behavior it will be a new science altogether for us because the conventional way of controlling them may not work so this will have other set of damaging system you know impact on the food security and food production system Sukrampal says if the government had given farmers a heat wave alert, 
Some farmers could have taken remedial measures to save portions of their crops. तो वहाँ पे सरकार ने कोई एडवाइजरी जारी नहीं करी एक महीना पहले सॉरी अब भाई अब की बार तापमान बढ़ने के कारण फसल में नुकसान हो सकता है मार्च से पहले कोई एडवाइजरी सरकार की तरफ से नहीं आई तापमान की वजह के लिए The government, however, insists it had provided adequate warning. Meteorological department had issued that April and May may see a strong and high heat waves, and accordingly, people have to get prepared. That warning was given. They had predicted this heat wave, and accordingly, they had advised the farmers, etc., growers of wheat, rice. other uh, food vegetables etc that they should cope with this uh, by watering the their fields ahead of the time nonetheless reduced yields have made sukrampal and his family worried papa agar hame har saal aise hi nuksan hota raha faslon mein to hamara bhavishya kya hoga koi nahi beta dekhenge waise tapman to badh raha hai देखते हैं आगे क्या होगा अपना फसल करने का तरीका बदलेंगे और देखेंगे क्या होता है और फिर जैसे अगर हमें अपने भाई को बाहर भी तो भेजना पढ़ाई के लिए तो उसके लिए हमें क्या करेंगे अभी कोई नहीं बेटे कर्जा कुर्जा ले लेंगे पाटदार होगा चिंता नहीं करते अकॉर्डिंग टू द ग्लोबल हंगर इंडेक्स लास्ट ईयर इंडिया रैंक कंट्रीज दिस मैन that a sizable proportion of people are malnourished should poor yields persist the number of indians at risk of hunger could increase by 23% by 2030 to about 74 million people a serious concern in terms of food security despite the hardships sukram pal is confident that farmers will not face starvation that's because they can grow enough to sustain themselves jo kisan hai aur jo kisan ke sath mazdoor hai jo gaon mein rehta hai wo kabhi bhookha nahi marega ha sar vasiyo ko sochna chahiye iske bare mein aage aage aapka kya hoga hamara to chalo jahan 20 quintal nikalna tha 22 quintal nikalna tha wahan 10 quintal nikal jayega hamara ghar to phir bhi chalega hum to apne daane aur mazdoor bhi apne daane ghar rakh lega जो कुर्सी बैठा है ना वह क्या करेगा जो नेता संसद में बैठे हैं वो क्या करेंगे वो कहाँ से खाएंगे आने वाले समय में दो ही चीजों पर लड़ाई होगी अनाज और पानी द कंसर्न इज दैट दिस समर्स हीट वेव इज नॉट एन अनोमली बट अ साइन ऑफ थिंग्स टू कम इफ सच एक्सट्रीम वेदर कंडीशन परसिस्ट विल इंडिया हेड टूवर्ड्स अ फूड क्राइसिस Twenty-four-year-old Pragyal Goyal Sahuwala graduated two years ago with an accountancy degree. A scion of the Sahuwala family, he joined the family business, running the Ganga Roller Flour Mill on the outskirts of Delhi. The mill is one of the largest and oldest in the country, employing more than 100 workers. Last year. It had an annual turnover of over 150 crore rupees, or around 19 million US dollars. The flour that Pragyan's family mill produces is sold in both Delhi and across the country. So wheat, as we know, is a staple all across North India, definitely, but in multiple other parts of India as well. Whether we talk about the roti and chapatis that we eat at home, or whether we talk about the bread that we all eat, or even biscuits, wheat is a significant staple in many, many parts of India. As India experiences an unprecedented heat wave, flour mills like Pragyan's worry about the supply of raw materials. First thing to note is definitely that heat, uh, wheat is a very fickle crop. If there's too much heat, or if there's too much rain, it can really impact the harvest. 
So especially with the heat this year, it's really impacted the wheat and a lot of it shriveled earlier, thereby reducing the yield that we got from it. Um, last year, 2021, we had a record harvest of 106 million metric tons. This year, our expected numbers, the final numbers are yet to come in, are substantially lower than that. And that's had a big impact on the government's procurement. As wheat supplies tighten, prices have climbed. So I think the better way to compare it is actually year on year. Compared to the same time period last year, what prices were we purchasing at this year? And this year they were substantially higher, I think at around 15 or 20 percent higher than what we were buying at last year. When the wheat prices go up, then that means that the costs for the finished products that we, can, we produce, which is wheat flour, and also for atta, which is whole wheat flour, go up. And then the end product, the customers that we sell to, which include major institutions and almost all of the significant bread manufacturers in India, are also forced to sort of increase their prices because they're buying their raw materials at a higher price. And, and that has a sort of compounding effect throughout. Pragyan is concerned that the costs will be passed down to consumers at the end of the chain. Prices of essential food items have increased in recent months and ordinary people are struggling to make ends meet. Fifty-year-old housewife Rashmi Gulati in Delhi spends sleepless nights worrying about what she can afford to buy from the market. Rashmi's fixed household budget is disappearing increasingly quickly. I used to be in the house, my husband told me to tell them to come and say to them. When I go, I tell them to come and say to them, this time I have 2,000 rupees extra, this time I have 1,300 rupees. They say, every time you come and say to them, I said, let's do it with me. Let's go to the bazaar, let's pay your money with your hands, you will also know. I tell you, I tell you, fear takes a lot of things. Sometimes, as I say, like we have seen this time of the COVID time, there are a lot of problems with rationing. There was no storage for them. There was a lot of problems for them. There was a lot of problems for them. There was a lot of problems for them. There are a lot of problems for them. You can't buy those things at home. You don't have to keep them at home. He gave us a lesson that some of the things, whether it's dry, you have a dal, a chawal, a tail, you should store it. Today, you feel that you will have minus what you have to do in a month. It feels like a jar is made and you are trying to get out of it. You can't get out of it. Our food is growing up in the country year on year according to the National Statistical Office. The food prices have also pushed up inflation in the last few months. The Consumer Price Index, or CPI, rose to 6.95% in March this year, compared to 5.85% about a year ago. The price increase is felt most acutely by those who have a fixed income. I was going to take 30 rupees from the KG. At the beginning of the next month, you go to 33. At the end of the next month, it's 38. At the end of the next month, it's 43, 45. Your budget is going to get a little bit. They say seasonal vegetables. So, they should be at least at least at least. But today, you can see that if you go to the bazaar, you can't get a lot of money from 60 rupees. You can't get a lot of money from 60 rupees. You can't get a lot of money from 60 rupees. You can't get a lot of money from 60 rupees. टमाटर सौ रुपए किलो आप क्या करोगे किस किस चीज में नहीं डालोगे बेसिक नीड की जरूरत है अवॉइड तो नहीं कर सकते अब वो सौ मिले सवा सौ मिले अस्सी मिले आपको तो खरीदना ही खरीदना पड़ेगा बच्चे ज़्यादातर खाना पसंद करते हैं अरहर की दाल राजमा छोले और उनके रेट कितने बढ़े हैं आज की डेट में राजमा दो और दो सौ किलो मिल रहा है जबकि आप सोचिए हंड्रेड रुपीज़ का उसके अंदर एकदम फ़र्क पड़ जाना बजट तो अपने आप ही बिगड़ता है अरहर की दाल जो थी वो भी 125 रुपए किलो तक मिलती थी इस टाइम 170 रुपए का उसका रेट चल रहा है आप दालों के अंदर इन चीजों के अंदर कंप्रोमाइज नहीं कर सकते ये तो नहीं है कि आप कोई भी अनपॉलिश दाल ले आए फिर आप लगे हुए हैं उनको साफ करने में किसी में थोड़ा सा तो हमें ध्यान रखना ही पड़ता है बच्चों के हिसाब बच्चों की पसंद का ख्याल ना करें तो खाना फिक के जाता है बच्चों के हिसाब से खाना लेके जाए आप ये मैगी वगैरह नूडल्स पास्ता इन पर भी रेट लगातार बढ़ते चले जा रहे हैं फिर नाउ Despite the rising prices, India doesn't have a cereal shortage yet. 
it still produces enough wheat and rice to meet domestic demand. But experts say there are shortages in other critical areas that make up the food basket. Food security का मतलब ये नहीं होता है कि सिर्फ wheat का production. इस साल जो heat wave का प्रभाव पड़ा है मार्च अप्रैल में और मई जून में उसका food production पे cereals पे भी vegetables पे भी livestock पे भी बड़े पैमाने पे पड़ा है. India as such does not have food security problem because when you look into calorie intake, how much calories we have to feed, we have enough calories, food calories we have. But when it comes to balanced diet, then there are challenges. Because in food we generally take into three components, carbohydrate, protein and fats. We have surplus carbohydrate, there is no challenge. But when it comes to protein, there is a shortage. Among the poor in India, cereals provide about 80% of their energy as rice and wheat are a cheap source of calories. When wheat prices rise, consumption of this staple could actually increase as the poor now have less money to afford more expensive food sources. And that's why there is a lot of issue of malnutrition and other challenges. And when it comes to edible oil or fats, there is a very serious problem and that's why we are importing 70% of our edible oil requirements. At a macro level, yes. Do we have enough food calories? Yes. But do we have balanced diet for all? I think there are big gaps in the system. It may not be a food security challenge for, you know, I will say elites because they can import food from anywhere in the world. But what about the masses? There is a growing challenge for political leadership. How to balance various equations? I may have enough food. But I cannot provide enough subsidy so that my poorest person can consume is also food security challenge in certain sections of the society. A balance also needs to be struck between the needs of consumers and producers who hope to cash in on the high prices. India's harvest is typ it typically ends by May. So that typically means the supply is highest right now in, in May, June and July. And then towards the later after the year, the prices typically tend to go up which we can expect for this year as well. Many farmers and many traders and stockists were buying wheat and they were holding on to it in the expectation that they'd be able to sell it at a much higher price. So due to that, a lot less wheat was finding its way to, to the government procurement or even to the, to the market for, uh, for millers and for other people to buy. तो उनके सबर का बांध टूटे गई ना तो गवर्नमेंट को ही आगे आना होगा इससे तो और ज़्यादा हाहाकार मचने वाला है अभी इतना ज़्यादा हो रहा है लोग कब तक सबर करेंगे कभी तक तो उनके सबर का बांध टूटे गई ना इन मई द गवर्नमेंट स्टेप्ड इन बैनिंग वीट एक्सपोर्ट्स इंडिया आल्सो एलोकेटेड मोर � all these to alleviate the demand pressures on wheat and reduce prices. We are going to tide over the situation. We have sufficient production. I don't think in the near future or over a longer period of time, India will face any food security problem. The government is very well committed to the welfare of the people and particularly the poor sections of the population. And I think right now there has been a little bit of relief. We have been seeing that atta prices have been coming down. But there still is a long way to go in terms of the rest of the year and bringing the prices down in the long term. I think the worst part about it is the unpredictability. Again, this heat wave that came was very unpredictable, which is why we aren't able to export as much as we initially thought we would be able to. And in the face of prolonged bouts of erratic weather, what can be done to deal with the impact of climate change on hundreds of millions of people? Human-caused climate disruption is now damaging every region. The most recent report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change 
details the suffering already happening. Half of humanity is already in the danger zone. Each increment of global heating will further increase the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events. The extremes are visible in India. Heavy rain, floods, heat waves and droughts. In May, while some regions suffered scorching heat, others, like Assam, experienced torrential rain. The deluge caused flash floods, destroying infrastructure and affecting over 800 square kilometers of cropland, an area larger than the landmass of Singapore. There is concern that such erratic weather patterns will occur with increasing frequency. ग्लोबल वार्निंग हो रहा है और लास्ट आईपीसीसी का जो रिपोर्ट है उसमें 1.5 टू 2 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड बढ़ने की बात कर रहे हैं और अभी जो रिसेंट रिपोर्ट फरवरी में आया है आईपीसीसी का जो पॉलिसी मेकर के लिए है उसमें ये कह रहे हैं कि आ, इंडिया और साउथ एशिया में पूरा इसका प्रभाव पड़ने जा रहा है इट इज ए फैक्ट दैट देर इज ए क्लाइमेट चेंज and there is an impact of climate change on the extreme weather events. Globally there is an impact and also in regional scenario India also experiences impact of the climate change on the extreme weather events. For example, if you just look at um, the temperature, as the temperature increases we find that northern India is experiencing um, more increasing trend as compared to southern India. And northern India is basically the region where we get the heat wave conditions. So therefore, the heat of probability of occurrence, its duration, its intensity increases with the increase in temperature over northern India. So in the heat core zone, which usually extends from Gujarat, Rajasthan, across UP, Madhya Pradesh to Chhattisgarh, Odisha and North Andhra Pradesh and Bidarbha region. So that experience is expected to experience more heat wave conditions. The past data from 1970 onwards till now also suggest that frequency of heat wave has increased over this region. According to a 2021 Lancet countdown report, India is among the top five countries with the most extreme heat wave exposure. India's vulnerability to extreme heat increased by 15% from 1990 to 2019. It has also experienced widespread drought every year since 2015. In Delhi, while the mercury might show 40 degrees, the field temperature is closer to 50. This is because of the wet bulb effect caused by high humidity. Temperatures feel warmer than they actually are. The heat wave has made living difficult in the capital. धीरे धीरे और भी ज्यादा किचन में काम आप कर रहे हैं रेशेज की प्रॉब्लम पहले कभी नहीं होती थी स्क्रीन प्रॉब्लम और थोड़ा सा भी मार्केट वगैरह आप जाते हैं एकदम तुरंत इचिंग वगैरह स्टार्ट हो जाता है पसीना इतना ज्यादा आता है आपको दूसरी बात निकलने में मेरी डॉटर है अभी कॉलेज एग्जाम के लिए जा रही थी वापस आती है रेशेज प्रॉब्लम तो नॉर्मली उसको चक्कर आने की प्रॉब्लम ऐसे होने लगी बहुत तेज गर्मी आंखों में अगर 10 11 बजे के बाद आप निकले आपकी आंखों में पेन होना शुरू हो जाता है और सर में दर्द है हेडेक प्रॉब्लम बहुत ज्यादा है this year, at least 90 people have died from the heat wave in India. It adds to the more than 6,500 who have succumbed to heat-related causes since 2010. To prevent more deaths, the government is issuing heat wave warnings and advisories. The heat wave impact forecast is being issued for the last two years. And there, we mention what are the possible impacts. So we have. As a country, we have been able to minimize the loss of lives. Now, the challenge is that to minimize the loss of property. Heat wave can have a huge impact on agriculture, be it the standing crops or the, in the sowing stage or in vegetation stage or in the harvesting stage or flowering stage. So therefore, what we do actually, we are now providing the impact-based agriculture information and hence it can be more useful to the farmers. But heat wave warnings may not help with one problem caused by the unpredictable weather. 
underground aquifers are being drained before they can be replenished by adequate rainfall. Compounded with overuse, some regions risk turning into dust bowls. Climate scientist Anand Sharma has been looking at this trend. Punjab farmers are growing lots of paddy, which is a humid area crop and Punjab is semi-arid area. And why they are growing this? Because the market forces, they get a good price. Secondly, they get free electricity and groundwater is free. So they are pumping out water and they are doing flood irrigation. At the same time, some areas you have groundwater totally depleted. So soils are turning saline and that in long term will lead to reduction in crop production, one. Second thing, due to intensive agriculture, lots of micronutrients like manganese, zinc, they've all been removed. So again, soil condition is becoming worse day by day. When it comes to wheat production, Punjab is facing now actually three challenges. One is depleting groundwater, which is going very fast downwards because of free electricity. So there is no uh, concern of farmers. They continue to exploit the water as if it's a free resource. Second is because of uh, no diversity in agriculture. It is just wheat, paddy, you know, cycle. Even nutritional value, or nutritional status of soil has degraded a lot. Third now, supplemented with climate change impact. So it has become a very deadly cocktail for Punjab. So Punjab has to not only look at wheat paddy recycle from a water table point of view, but Punjab has to also seriously look into how they can recharge their soil health. Unless they do it, even other crops will also not perform. So one side, water, second side, soil health, and third challenge is now climate change. So Punjab is heading for a serious challenge unless they change the way they are operating. The biggest problem with regard to heat wave is that availability of water is a challenge for the food uh, producing farmers. So there we are increasing the uh, irrigated land mass area. Secondly, we are working on the re uh, groundwater uh, on the uh, Jal Jeevan mission, a focused approach on uh, increasing the groundwater uh, uh, availability. And the third is with regard to policies, with regard to conservation and preservation of water. The Prime Minister said that government bodies should work towards the revival of at least 75 water bodies which can store water, recharge water, store rainwater uh, in this year, in this two, three years interlinking of rivers project is also taking place so that certain rivers which are over flooded with waters, their water can be diverted to the rivers which have shortages of water. We will be able to sufficiently deal with these issues. And even some of the farmers' education is required with regard to what uh, uh, agriculture produce they should produce because Punjab has a serious problem with regard to water availability. The groundwater issue highlights the complexities of addressing food security in the face of climate change. The problem is multifaceted. We have to be very careful. Maybe it is high time when most of the countries have to spend more resources in understanding how the climate change is going to impact the food security. And also we have to focus on research how to generate new varieties of seeds which can withstand the impact of climate change and also we have to relook into the insect behavior, how they are going to attack the crops in a different ecosystems. So I think it's very, very challenging. Food security is going to be one of the biggest political challenge for most of the world leaders now. Government has to now put up a dedicated research focus on climate change and an impact on India's food security. There has to be a dedicated research agenda and every crop has to be looked at, every livestock, every animal system, every fodder system, even aquaculture. Everything has to be re-looked at it. When your body temperature is 102, you are not worried. But when your temperature is 104, 
we rush to the doctor. So, this 2 degree temperature in a human body can make create panic for us. Imagine what will happen if there is a 2 degree temperature change in the global space, it is going to be a disaster. Vinesh Rana in Daha village is already worried about what he thinks is an impending disaster. जिस तरीके से तापमान आगे आने वाले वर्षों में भी ये बढ़ेगा लगातार बढ़ेगा 40 से 45 डिग्री अधिकतम 45 डिग्री तापमान कोई भी फसल सहन कर पाती है उससे ज्यादा तापमान सहन नहीं कर पाती और जिस तरीके से तापमान बढ़ रहा है ये जमीन जो है वो बर्बाद हो जाएगी क्योंकि फसल कोई होगी नहीं ये जमीन पूरी बर्बाद हो जाएगी किसान बर्बाद होंगे बिल्कुल भुखमरी फैलेगी ऐसे चलता रहा तो हमारे देश की जो खाद्य सुरक्षा है वो आने वाले समय में गंभीर परिणाम भुगतने पड़े किसान के पास अनाज होगा तब एक खाद्य सुरक्षा बची रहेगी